One thing we can say about Man United right now with absolute certainty is that the 4-2-3-1 formation isn't really working for us. We've only scored more than one goal once this season. That was a 4-0 against Chelsea on the opening game of the season. And prior to that, it was West Ham back in April when Popper scored two penalties. So the 4-2-3-1 isn't really getting the best out of this United team. So maybe it's time for Solskjaer to look at a new formation. So what I want to do in this video is suggest a formation that I think could play to United's strengths right now. And we haven't got very many. Now, before I do begin, make sure you subscribe if you are new. And I also want to say a big thank you to the reaction on the Glazers and the Woodward video. Put a lot of time into that and it's good to see that all of us are on the same wavelength. But let's talk about a potential new formation for United against Arsenal. The formation I want to take a look at is the 3-5-2. Now, I remember back in 2017 when we played Chelsea at Old Trafford and we used this formation and we beat them comfortably 2-0. We had Rashford and Lingard playing up top. They were playing with a high line. We were exposing the spaces in behind and hitting hard and fast with Lingard and Rashford up front. It worked perfectly. And against Arsenal, who I think will play with a higher line than most teams at Old Trafford, I think we should try and implement a similar style because the 4-2-3-1 is too slow. It's too reliant on a top draw, number 10, to bridge the midfield in the attack. And right now, United just don't have that player. Pogba's been injured. Matt has been out of form, I would say. He's been OK, but he's still too slow for it. Lingard is not a number 10. Just for United, it's not a strong position right now. So I want to look at a formation that focuses on other strengths I think this team has at the moment. So let's run through maybe a starting 11 that we could use in this formation as well. Obviously, De Gea's in goal. And something I would love to see De Gea do this season, now that the contract stuff is out of the way, I'd like to see De Gea try and focus his game on mimicking Edison and Anderson a little bit more. Just being a little bit more aggressive in his box, his starting position should be a little bit higher because it would allow everybody to push their lineup slightly higher. He's a little bit too deep in his own box and hopefully we can see an improvement in that this season. But the reason I want to use this formation is because looking at these three centre-backs there, Lindelof, Maguire and Tuanzebe, I think of all the positions, this is the position where United do have strength. Yes, it might be a risk starting all three in case one gets injured, but I think this would allow a better style of football, if you can say that. Because with Lindelof, if he's in a back three, three centre-backs, he can just focus on playmaking, which I think is a strong part of his game. Then you've got Maguire, who can focus on dominating the air, on dominating that position and stifling the space for Arsenal's centre-forwards. And then you've got Tuan Zebe, who I think put in such a mature performance against Rochdale as captain, a big night for him, that he deserves to start here. And he's got such great pace in comparison to Lindelof and Maguire that he can cover Maguire and he can cover Lindelof. And I think as a back three, they will complement each other very, very well. Now, as you're playing with three centre-backs, it allows you to have wing-backs. And Wan-Bissaka and Young are the two players that I would use here. Now, for me, Young is probably the weak point in this whole formation. Maybe midfield is a weak point as well. But I would rather play Young there than Rojo, who would just bomb forward and would not come back. But with three centre-backs, there's more defensive cover if they do go forward. And I would rather Luke Shaw be fit and ready, but I would play Ashley Young there. Now, with Wan-Bissaka, going forward is probably the weakest point in his game. It absolutely is the weakest point in his game. And this would allow it, allow him to sort of try and grow in that style because he needs to improve in that area. But he's fit enough defensively that he can bomb forward and come back and be in position as well. And playing him alongside Tuan Zebe, or maybe you play Tuan Zebe on the left to give cover for Young, I think that could work very, very well as a back five. It's just clearly not working. This style that we, get, that we have at the moment, this 4-2-3-1, it's too rigid, it's too reliant on two dominant central midfielders and a dominant number 10 to really control that midfield. We don't have it at the moment, so why not focus on our three centre-backs, who I think are the strength of the team at the moment, and Wan-Bissaka and Young, and allowing them to go forward. And then you're looking at midfield, and I don't really know who to play here. So as you can see, I've got different options in certain positions. Matomane is the only dead cert to start. Who plays alongside him, I don't know. Fred, 
or Matic. Now, Fred, my judgment is massively reserved on Fred. He was pretty crap against Rochdale. He's been pretty insignificant in most games that he plays, but he's a much more mobile footballer than Matic, who's so slow that it's painful to put him in any starting eleven. That's why I'm always hesitant to put Matic in, especially up against a team like Arsenal that moves it quick. That's why a mobile midfielder, McTominay and Fred, I feel, might work better. But let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Now, Popper, I'd be putting him in this starting eleven, But Solskjaer said that his ankle was swollen after the Rochdale game and he might not be fit to play. That was a risk to play him for the full 90. I was surprised that he played the full 90 against Rochdale, but it is what it is. And Pogba, by the looks of it, won't be fit. So who plays in that number 10 role? Two options there, really. Pereira or Mata. You could put Lingard there as well, but I don't consider him a number 10 in any way, shape or form. So I'd probably put Pereira there. I think against Rochdale, maybe I was a bit harsh in saying that he had a poor game over on Twitter after the match, but at least he was creating opportunities. At least he was shooting on distance and getting his shots on target. Why Mata, as good as he is as a number 10, he's just... He's just too slow. That's the end of it, really, with Matter. You know, he's a wonderful footballer, but he relies on a team to dominate possession for him to have a good game. And in a game against Arsenal, it's going to be scrappy and that we need to win the ball back quickly. He's not the right sort of player. So that's why I put Pereira in there. Now, obviously, this formation is going to rely on the wing-backs for width. So Dan James, I'm not sure whether there's going to be a place for him in the starting eleven, or maybe there is up front. Let me know who you would start up front in this formation, but I have gone for Mason Greenwood and Jesse Lingard. Now, don't shout at me for mentioning Lingard here, but Lingard against Chelsea in that 2-0 back in 2017 played up there with Rashford and they caused Chelsea's defence all sorts of problems simply with their movement. I'm not putting Lingard in here to score goals. I'm putting Lingard in here to drag defenders away from Greenwood to give him the space to score the goals because with two goals in his first two starts this season, Greenwood's our informed man. Martial is injured. He's going to miss this game. Rashford is injured. He's going to miss this game. We shouldn't be relying on a 17-year-old, but lo and behold, that is what is happening. And Greenwood should be starting this game. Now, you could start Dan James up front there. But I'm not sure that would be the best idea. I'd rather see James come on for the last 30, 40 minutes against a tiring Arsenal defence than the first 60. Let me know what you think about that. Now, Maybe this formation does take away a strength that we did have in Dan James, playing with real width. And maybe that's a mistake. But I don't think this United team is good enough in any position or any formation to be certain that we should stick to a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 or a 3-5-2. We're going to have to experiment because what is not working is that 4-2-3-1 right now. As I said, we've only scored more than one goal in one game this season, the opening game, and you've got to go back as far as April for the last time United scored two or more goals in a game. Things have got to change. And having that defensive solidarity in a back three with your wing-backs would give United better shape in defence. And Arsenal are very good going forward. And they will give us the space to exploit in behind. And that's why I think Solskjaer should be considering a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2, however you want to call it. It's more suited to the counter-attacking style that we saw against Chelsea in the opening game of the season that suits this team more. We're not good enough in midfield and we're not good enough in the number 10 position to dominate games. So we shouldn't be trying to do it. We should be trying to get the ball up to our attackers as quickly as possible. Having Wan-Bissaka and Young on the overlaps will give us that width. So it would be a big game for Pereira if he was to play in that number 10 role and that's probably going to... As much as I said Young was a weak point, and that number 10 role is clearly a weak point as well, but so is Fred in midfield. Look, it's United team is not very good at the moment. There's no other way to describe it. But it doesn't mean that I think we should just continue with the 4-2-3-1 and just game after game just have an uninspiring performance. I think this could get at least some resemblance of the game against Chelsea. Maybe we will just stick to the 4-2-3-1 and it will work better because Arsenal will be playing further up the pitch. But I think this would allow someone like Maguire and Lindelof to control the game better from the fence. And we need that because we haven't got the midfield to do it. So I want to see Maguire having the ability to run out of defence into midfield and becoming that sort of ball-playing centre-back that we know he can be, but he can't really do that 
in a defensive two because Lindelof isn't good enough at the moment on his own to control that space. That's why I think the back three would get the most out of our defence and maybe it would help our lacking midfield at the moment. So I wouldn't mind seeing Solskjaer trying this formation against Arsenal. I think it could work. There's clear weaknesses in Arsenal's defence. If we can't score against this Arsenal defence, then Jesus Christ. I mean, David Luiz is an absolute abomination of defender. United should be trying to exploit their weaknesses and they will play high lines, play in behind with Greenwood and Lingard and let's see what happens. But let me know what you think about the formation that United are using at the moment. Is it right? Should we be sticking to the 4-2-3-1? Who would you start in this team? For me, there's questions over the central midfielder, Fred or Matic, there's questions over that number 10, Pereira or Mata, and there's questions as to who should partner Greenwood if we do play with two strikers up front. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below, as always, but what United need against Arsenal is three points. And I think this formation might help us get that.